But the BBC uh, TV licence is free for all over 75s. The, the government passed that as a cost to the BBC a few years ago. The BBC now says it's going to be means tested from the 1st of August. Should it be? No. No, uh, of course not. You know, we, we we all know how we've experienced the, the shutdown, you know, the, the lockdown and how difficult it's been for us all. For some elderly and vulnerable people up and down this country, that is their life and TV can be a complete lifeline. We gave the BBC a very, very healthy settlement uh, back in 2015. They agreed it was a strong and fair settlement. And they really, uh, you know, this is very, very disappointing news. So should they be cutting other things rather than cutting the uh, the, uh, the availability of that free TV licence? I think they should be looking at other efficiency savings that can be made because, you know, this is, this is a lifeline for so many people. OK, thank you very much indeed. They're now saying, oh, we haven't got the money. We can't possibly do it. We're going to have to means test it. That's been a, a big um, issue. More than three million households of over 75s could now be hit by the £157.50 fee. Um, uh, and they're going to start means testing it from the 1st of August. Do you think this is the right decision or a reasonable decision by the BBC if they say they're stuck for funds? Uh, yes, I do. I'm afraid that on this, I think the BBC is right and the government is wrong. But I'll tell you why, because it's really as a matter of principle, leave aside the detail, I do think the BBC is taking the right decision. Uh, George Osborne had to find £12 billion of welfare savings in 2015, which seems like a drop in the ocean compared to where we are now. And he worked out that one way he could reach his target was to take the free TV license, which was a welfare benefit like pensions, like universal credit, a welfare benefit funded by government and force the BBC to fund it. We mitigated that a bit for the BBC. We increased the license fee. We took off some uh, funding that the BBC was already uh, having to do, like broad, rural broadband. But it's still a major financial impact. But he did it with the explicit promise that at the end of the period when the government was funding it, which is this year, the BBC would have a free hand. It could have abolished free TV licences completely. It could have kept the policy exactly as it is today, where everyone over 75 gets a free TV licence. But I think they thought it through very carefully and came up with a compromise. And I'm surprised. I could see in the run-up to an election, politicians trying to have their cake and eat it and saying, even though we've imposed this on the BBC, isn't this a terrible thing? I think with four years to go and a massive majority, uh, the government and ministers should just say, this is a matter for the BBC, let them get on with it. And weirdly, it would probably help the government because everyone would blame the BBC. But well, the but, it, but, it, is, but the it is the BBC's decision. I have to say, I do find it really bizarre that my parents in their late 70s uh, with, uh, with money in the bank should get a free TV licence and then there's someone who's you know, unemployed in their 20s who has to pay for it. I think it's quite bizarre. Exactly. And that's why I think the BBC has been right to try and target this benefit. I mean, we might be in a similar position. I've got a mother who's over 75. She has a lodger who's wonderful and I have no criticism of her lodger at all. But the lodger lives in a house with a free TV license, <laughs> even though she's in her 30s. And uh, there are plenty of households like that where quite understandably families are caring for elderly relatives. They get the benefit. Perhaps, perhaps they deserve it. But the trouble with any benefit, as you know, Julie, is the minute you hand it out, it takes about three weeks before people assume that this has been uh, the case since Moses came down from the mountain. And the minute Gordon Brown handed out free TV licenses to pensioners, it was going to prove extremely difficult to remove it. And and what, what, what about the fact that I mean, decriminalising it? It's, 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 it is effectively a tax. It's going to be uh, you know, charged by the BBC, but it is, to all intents and purposes, a tax because if you don't pay it, if I don't pay my electricity bill, I can be fined. I can, you know, I'm not fined, but I can actually, you know, be facing my electricity cut off. But I'm not going to be sent to jail for it. Whereas, if I don't pay my BBC license fee, I could be sent to jail. But realistically, is the BBC going to start, you know, imprisoning, threatening jail to, you know, 85 year old Ethel? Well, I, I sincerely hope not. I'm feeling, I'm feeling worried for 85 year old Ethel now at the moment. Now you may be worried about, it, but. I mean, but if you're John over Whittendale, 75 and you don't pay your John, license fee, you're not going to go to jail, are you? John Whittingdale is the minister for the BBC and he was the minister for the BBC when all of this was discussed, decriminalisation, and, and he decided uh, it wasn't right to decriminalise the license fee. There are some differences, but it has, I, I accept, it's become a sort of totemic issue. Uh, people who are opposed to the license fee in principle who think in the 21st century it's absurd that we should all effectively pay a poll tax to watch television, see decriminalisation as, uh, 
something that is sort of totemic and, and they would like to see it decriminalized. I mean, we went through it. I personally don't lose sleep either way. Okay. If the government decided to decriminalize it, I'm not sure the BBC's predictions of catastrophe would come true. Uh, so if that is what it takes, as it were, to give Tory backbenchers, I'll put it that way, who are skeptical about the BBC a victory, then I would have I would be personally relaxed if the government uh, did that. Do you think that people on the sort of incomes you've been on should uh, get a free TV license giveaway from the BBC or indeed the state or whoever? No, I, I think it's absolutely right that it should be means tested. I think one of the big scandals of the last decade, and I you know, played a part in it, uh, is the, all the pensioner benefits that, that have continued unabated. I mean, most people in this country took a big cut in their incomes after the financial crisis, they're going to be hit again. But, you know, my pension and other uh, pensioner benefits have been largely untouched. And I think we're going to have to be quite hard headed about that. Uh, so I see no problem with means testing. I think it would be outrageous for me to be given, uh, you know, a free license. Uh, I mean, there are things uh, which make kind of wider sense. I mean, the, the free freedom passes to get around on public transport are worth keeping because you need to keep elderly people mobile. Um, but I think in general, um, the older generation have got to play our part, and I include myself in that. OK, I mean, do, do you think actually um, that there is a very, very strong argument for it being means tested, but uh, taking away the aspect of the criminalisation you know, criminalization of it? So if you don't pay your licence, if you choose not to pay it, you may get, you know, uh, the BBC might be you know, sending you nasty letters and you may, I don't know, cut off your TV signal. Is that even possible? I don't know. Um, but you won't face going to jail because the prospect of the BBC taking on a, an 80 year Old, uh, old, vulnerable old lady living alone, uh, but who just has just that too much income, and he wouldn't be only you could only be earning like sort of having eight thousand pounds a year, I think, and still not be eligible for uh, um, getting uh, the pension credit, and therefore having to pay a license fee, and taking her to court and putting her behind bars. That's not going to go down well, is it? Well, I'd be amazed if anybody's currently going to prison because they haven't paid their television license. But it would no, I, you're quite right. It would be completely counterproductive and unnecessary. Okay. But you've got to have some sanction. I mean, you know, if people don't pay, then there's got to be some fine or... Should there, but, uh, that's the, but that's the question. Should there be a sanction for people to, you know, you have to basically have a... It's basically a tax for having a television. If it's a tax, yep. then the government should, should be, you know, it should just be there automatically. But, you know, there's no sanction if I don't pay my Netflix account. I just can't get Netflix. Yes, but as you say, it's a, it is essentially a form of taxation and we don't normally regard taxation as purely voluntary. Uh, so there, there has to be something behind it. But I agree, packing off uh, a lot of old uh, older people to prison is just beyond comprehension and is, is not a sensible thing to do. There seems to be sort of quite a sort of knee-jerk reaction to this. Like it's outrageous. Old people shouldn't be forced to pay for the licence fee. And I have to say, I don't think anyone should be forced to pay for the licence fee. That's my issue. But it does seem to me, the idea that, and I've mentioned this on the show earlier, uh, my parents who are very, you know, very, very well uh, off for, for pensioners, why should they in their late 70s be getting a free licence fee worth £157.50 when somebody who's unemployed in their 20s isn't getting it? It does seem quite bizarre. Shouldn't it be means tested? Well, I think that means testing the licence fee for the over 75s is a very good idea. I agree with you entirely. My mother, for example, who's an avid BBC listener and viewer, could well afford to pay the licence fee and doesn't understand why she's been given it for nothing when she'd be more than happy to pay for it. Equally, however, I think it's really important that those over 75 who make very heavy use of BBC services, who regard their television and their radio as a form of company and perfectly reasonably do so, that they should have to be properly supported and the pension credit arrangements are not perfect in allowing that exemption. It's the right exemption but the means of application and the rules surrounding it need peace relaxed, I think. Well, well that's it. I mean, pension credit, basically, they, basically you, the idea is if it's going to be means tested, if you get pension credit, which is tops up, you're up if you're on a very low income, then uh, then you will be exempt. You won't have to pay for the licence fee. But uh, pension credit, you, we're, we're talking about being on 7,800 a year if you're a single person and a few, obviously, thousand more than that if you're a couple. But we are talking about people on very low incomes indeed. Uh, and we know that about one and a half million eligible households, their income is low enough that they should be claiming 
pension credit. They're not claiming for whatever reason. They don't know about it. They're too proud or whatever the reason. The big concern will be that not only the 1.5 million who, who really can't afford it uh, are, are going to have to pay for the licence fee, uh, but also that there'll be many uh, older people who are on low incomes just above uh, that threshold um, who, who really are struggling and choosing whether they put the you know the, the heating on in the winter because they're worried about their, their income, uh, who, who are going to struggle to pay for this licence fee. And the key thing here is that you can be taken to court if you don't pay your licence fee and you could be fined. And if you don't pay your fine, ultimately you can be jailed. But but realistically, the BBC isn't going to go around jailing or even fining, you know, 80 year olds on low incomes who aren't paying their licence fee, are they? That will be the death knell of the BBC. Well, I think you strike on a very important point. This is going to be a very unpopular decision politically. I understand precisely why the BBC has done it. It's got to make an extra £125 million of saving this year or cut services. It recognises that it is under enormous pressure because, after all, the licence fee was originally subsidised by taxpayers, by the government from 2000. It was only very recently that the government decided that it was going to impose that charge on the BBC licence fee. And the BBC, although it consented to that, has always resented it. But I think that there's an underlying challenge here. And it's something I say as a passionate supporter of the BBC who really believes in it as a great British institution. The BBC has warned that if it didn't do this, it would have to close services. I think the BBC has got to face the reality that if it is going to save the licence fee, if it's going to preserve its status as a national institution, it does actually have to make that hard choice Close a few services. No, but it's not a it's sales. not a hard choice, though, Tim. I mean, I'm sorry. I, I've been into enough radio studios and TV studios around the country uh, to know perfectly well how overstaffed the BBC is. I mean, with, I don't want anyone. Oh, the this BBC. is a red herring. Julie. No, it's not no, 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 no. There are so what many services they run. Well, no, they there never is... decide. They never decide to simply not do something. And the right choice for the BBC is not to reduce the resources available to its excellent programme. Why not? It's why, why, do they need to, why do they need five Julia, times as many you, people working on a show as, as, Julia, as an independent broadcaster? Julia, you listen to me rather than talking yourself? It no, I'm, really I'm asking you a question, it. Tim. I'll do whatever well, I want, thank you very much. It's my show. I'm asking you a question. If you don't want to answer I'm it, it's fine, we'll end it. You, I'm suggesting to you that you're not understanding the point. The point is this. The BBC should staff its programmes well, but it should Why? reduce the number of channels. No, 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 no. And that... It should reduce the number of services. No, Tim, I understand, I, 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 I understand what you're saying. I'm disagreeing with you. I'm telling you, to staff a show well, you don't have to staff it at BBC levels. You will, if you go into sort of Sky News, ITV News, BBC News, you will see the BBC has huge numbers more staff. And I've got a lot of producers who've worked at the BBC. They do approximately a quarter of the work that staff are doing in independent broadcasters. There's a reason why they're overstaffed, because they, they don't accept that the normal working practices in the rest of the world. They could cut a huge number of staff, still produce exactly the same output, and none of us would be any the wiser, and they'd make those savings. If I'd asked a question that long when I was presenting... Oh, I'm bored now. Let's get it. No, oh, Tim, it's just boring now, honestly. I, I Don't... I, I'm 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 asking you questions. If you don't want to answer them, that's fine. But I mean, I, the idea that you're the only person who, who has an opinion or has any knowledge about the BBC is quite absurd. Uh, Tim Luckhurster, who apparently is a principal at South College, Durham University. They don't like it when you criticise the BBC, do you? Do they? They really don't like it. Just big thanks, by the way, to my last guest, Tim Luckhurst, who said to my producer, do you know what Ofcom is? Yes, it's the people you can go make a complaint to if you're unhappy with your interview. So do feel free to make that complaint, Tim Luckhurst. Just a top tip. When an, inter when an interviewer disagrees with you it doesn't mean they don't understand it means they're disagreeing with you and uh, best not to uh, tell presenters of their shows uh, what uh, how to do their job because um, I'm not paid for uh, by BBC licensed fee payers if people want to listen to my show they can listen to my show and enjoy it my show DAB plus online and like and they're not paid they're not forced to pay for a license fee to do that and they're also not forced uh, to face going to jail if they don't pay that license fee so uh, yeah you know what I'll speak as freely as I want thanks ever so much